Hey, I'm Arden Kaywin. Welcome to the Pro Singer Success Collective. Today we're going to be talking about the number one thing that creates elite singing careers quickly. So today we're talking about speed to the goal, right? Y'all are doing all kinds of things in your singing. You're all in different places. Some of you are at the beginning. Some of you are starting to get some little bites here and there, performances and recordings. And some of you are actually doing what you want, but you're not getting paid enough. You know, you're all in different different parts of this career in this spectrum. And there are lots of things, lots of moving pieces here in order to be able to create a really elite successful singing career and be able to do it quickly so that you're not suffering at day jobs that you hate, you're not performing in you know low level community performances that really aren't at the level you wanna be at and are not getting you paid, right? So if you wanna be able to move quickly through the gap between where you are and where you want to go there is one one thing that i have seen in my 25 years of doing this work in my own career working with singers that creates movement faster now there's lots of things that you need to do to be a powerhouse singer you need to have full control over your technique. You need to have locked down your breath support. You need to have, you know, a really beautiful focused resonance that's really awesome for whatever genre that you're singing. You need to be on pitch. That's a given, right? You need to have consistency and reliability throughout your entire range. You know, those of you who are really scared of your head voice or those of you who live in your head voice and are kind of scared of your chest voice, right? That kind of consistency and reliability through your whole range is super important to be a powerhouse singer and make that impact. You need to be able to deliver when it counts. Meaning if you're just awesome in your car and in your shower, but when you show up to a big audition or a big performance or when people are watching and it counts, if it all kind of goes out the window and it never, your voice never shows up the way you know it can when it counts, that's something that you need to be a powerhouse singer, be able to deliver when it counts and trust that you will deliver every single time. You need to be able to be vulnerable. In, and be able to, to go there in performances and auditions, be able to let yourself be seen, be heard, be able to make that connection with an audience, be able to make an impact on that audience because you're not either in fear and don't look at me mode, or you're also not out there in that sort of fake, look at me, prove, force, you know, like you've all seen singers like that who are all, you know, and you, you just want to be like, <laughs> chill, like just connect to yourself, right? So you need to be able to do that and do it in the moments that it counts. Do it in front of members of the audience or an audition panel to be able to show that vulnerability and connect in that way. And so these are these are all the things, you know, there's so many more that you need to do in order to be able to bring it and be a powerhouse singer. But there's one thing that you need to be able to do that affects your ability to do all those other things much more quickly and much more powerfully. And it is this, you must be willing to fail. You must be willing to make a bad sound. Now, so many of you are so terrified of making a bad sound, of failing, of you know it not coming out the way that you want. And when you're in that fear of failure, when you're in that fear of judgment or embarrassment that is all just an outgrowth of fear of failing, when you are not willing to show up and, you know, in your own practice, in your own training, be willing to fail, you will never get to the elite sound that you really want. And I will tell you why. Because that fear of failure, you know, for so many of you, most of you, I'm guessing, you care about your singing. You have this gift, you have this passion, and you do not want to fail at it. 
You do not want to have to, you know, spin your wheels working at a restaurant or a day job, just, you know, plug in hours for the next 10 years if it doesn't work out. And now you're just a glorified waitress. That sucks. That, you know, you don't want to fail at this dream. You don't want to have to sit there and watch somebody else up there living your dream while you're stuck at some job that like doesn't fulfill you and make use of your gifts. You don't want to always wonder what if. And that fear of failing at the thing that you care about and that you love and that is your passion the most is so great. Ego mind does not want to fail at this thing because it is terrified of what your life will look like. You don't want to look like, you know, the other members of your family who gave up on their dream and are now living that bitter, resentful place. You don't want to be that person who, you know, is always like, well, I made a record in my 20s and, uh, you know, I was really great back then. And like, so, so what? Nobody's ever heard of you. And you know that. And it eats at you and it sucks, you know? It sucks to have a gift and not be able to live it and be able to have money from it for the rest of your life to have to know that you couldn't cut it and you couldn't make it. And all of the mental health challenges that that brings, all the ways we cope, you know, going for that extra bottle or three or four of wine at the end of the day, because you can't do the thing that you really want to do because you're not, you didn't have the skill set and the mindset to go there and do it because you weren't good enough, you know, to have to be at, like I was saying, some job that just isn't because it, you had to go to plan B because you couldn't really succeed at your plan A and then all the less than feelings that that brings up. And then how we cope with that, you know, binging Netflix, you know, retail therapy, drugs and alcohol. Some people go there, self-medicating, sex. I mean, there's all the things that come when a person feels less than and like a failure in their life because they never had the tools, the skill set, the mindset to actually go live it powerfully. And so we know what that life looks like, probably because we've seen either our parents or other members of our family or people that we know who are in that. We don't want that. So we don't want to fail at this thing. So we're terrified of failing. And in the moment that we're practicing, in the moment that we're working on our technique, that we're working, you know, maybe with our teachers or in studio classes and programs that we're doing, we are not willing to fail because we don't want that judgment. We need to succeed now because we don't want that future. And so without that willingness to fail though, here's what happens. You do not give yourself permission to experiment and iterate. And so when you're in you know, your own practice or with your teacher or in studio class or a master class or however you're, you know, you're working your technique now and you're practicing your stuff now, you're caring about the outcome right now. And so that stops you because when you care about that outcome, because you don't want to fail, your body, your instrument, and your brain are not willing to let go and do the things that it needs to do to experiment with new techniques, new ideas, new ways that things could feel in your body because you don't want to sound bad. Because if you sound bad, then here's where the mind goes. Well, if you sound bad, then the record's not going to sound good or the audition's not going to go well. I'm not going to get the job. I'm not going to get to sing the way I want. And the dominoes fall that land as you being that miserable person who doesn't get to live their dream, has to you know settle for plan B in their life and be jaded and resentful for the rest of their life or worse. That, that's the domino. And so in that moment, of, of practice in that moment of audition in that moment of you know getting to to do a master class or whatever it is there is no there is no willingness to fail because mind is already associating that with you know being 50 years old and the lady and the cats with her house who you know never got to live her dream and the more that that perpetuates the less you are willing to fail, the slower it will take you to get where you want to go. The body is responding to that fear. And so it will not let you 
do the thing, make the sound, employ the technique that could otherwise make all the difference in the world for you. It's not like you don't understand what you need to be doing. Your teachers are telling you certain things. Your coaches are telling you certain things. If you work with me, I'm telling you certain things, right? And I, we do a lot of work with the singers in my program on this. But if, if, if you're holding on in that moment to, you know, I got to sound good. I can't fail. I got to do this right. Oh, that's a big one. I got to get it right. That's just another version of fear of failure. Because mind has convinced you that if you get it right, you won't fail. So now all of those things, you know, you cause body to, to hold or to force or to manipulate or to, you know, all of these ways that the body then sabotages, or I'm sorry, I should say the mind sabotages the body from actually hooking in to the mechanism and the performance that it otherwise could. But you will never know because you never gave yourself a chance to explore and experiment what that is because you were too terrified in your subconscious mind of not getting it right and of failing. So one of the things that I tell my singers all the time is this. How would you sing if you had ultimate permission to suck? How would you do this phrase if you could, it, like I will say, I dare you to mess it up right now. And sometimes I get a little saucy and I'll even curse and I'll say, I dare you to F it up right now. I'll say, I dare you to make a bad sound. You have full permission to make a bad sound. Or I'll ask them, how would you sing this? If you literally had permission to just completely bomb and there were zero consequences at all. And then I'll say, don't explain it to me, just do it. And nine times out of 10, what happens is they do it the way that they have been wanting to. The technique hooks in and they're able to get that high note with ease and power or, you know, the, the, the mind and the body hook in and they're able to open up and just let go and be vulnerable and connect in a way that they were terrified that they couldn't do. Or if they did, that maybe it wouldn't be good. You know, all these things that we don't do, we don't engage with because we don't, we're scared of what would happen if we don't get it right. So we don't let go. We don't explore. We don't iterate. And then we miss out on the big breakthroughs. So you must be willing to fail. You must be willing to make a bad sound. The only way that you're going to get to the good sound is by being, being willing, like taking the training wheels off, so to speak, to removing the bumpers, you know, from the bowling alley, right? And, and being willing to screw it up. Because without that willingness, your body's just going to want to continue to control. And it is that control that prevents you from the best technique, from the best sound, and from the biggest impact on your audience. And so that, that desire to want to get it right, that desire to not want to fail, like it has an impact in your body, guys. It's what, it's what keeps you in all these old patterns and all the old sounds and all the old ways that you're, you feel less than when you're strain, when you're in strain, when you can't get the high note, when you, when your breath support doesn't work, when you can't make it to the end of the phrase, like all of these things are because your body is not hooking into your technique. Now I'm assuming that you're being taught good technique. If you're not, then you need to address that. But that can be, that can, you know, be sabotaged by fear of failing too. You know, I, don't, I get analysis paralysis and I don't want to switch teachers because what if, it, what if I don't pick the right teacher? What if the other teacher is just as bad as this one? What, you know, and then you don't make a move because you're afraid of not getting it right. You're afraid of that not working and being a failure, okay? So all of these things are really just an outgrowth of not being willing to fail. When you give yourself permission to make a bad sound, you guys, it happens every time that I do this with a singer in my program. When they have that permission to make a bad sound, it's like, oh, like they're, they, just, they just relax, they let go. They, and then what happens is that the technique that they otherwise understand is now free to hook in in a way that is so much more integrated, so much more powerful, so much more efficient. When they're willing to go there in a performance, and, you know, like I say, on a scale of 1 to 10, take it to 25. 
take it to ridiculous, be ridiculous. Whatever the story is that you're telling, when they're willing to stop judging themselves and being worried about other people judging them, when you can do that because you have utter permission to just screw it up and, and fail forward, right? Then all of a sudden, the things and the energy and the body and the technique and, and, and the, the impact start to connect in ways that they did not have the ability to do before. And so this also affects the way that you move forward in the business side of your career, the, the, from a career and business perspective as to what you're doing, right? Being willing to, to put yourself out there, go to a lot of auditions, invest and make a recording, invest in, the, in, in a producer or in a trading program or in taking yourself to a different city to go to that big audition, right? If you are terrified of failing at those things, and then you are not gonna put yourself out there. And if you, you know, you've got to be willing to put yourself out there and try and do it and invest in it and fail and learn and iterate. And it is this, this true for your, your, your technique and it is true for how you're putting yourself out there and the things that you're doing you know, from, from the business of your, of your singing. It is true for both. The more willing you are to take action and fail, then you, then the faster your career moves forward because the faster you will get data. And so I'm always telling my students, we just want data. We, we want to look at what's working and what's not working. We don't want to make drama out of it, right? Go to the data, not the drama. I'm always saying, but if you're not willing to fail, then you're not willing to really put yourself out there and do the things that are gonna then give you data. You know how many singers I know who, you know, they'll go, they'll, they'll tell me, oh, my auditions, are, my auditions are not working. And I'll say, well, how many auditions did you go on in the last month? One. How many auditions did you do the month before that? Two. What about the month before that? One. Okay. So they're not willing to put themselves out there for a lot of things. And so all the data, the only data they have is they went to four auditions in three months. That's not a lot of data, but they're not gonna get the, and so let me rewind for a second. The reason that data is important is because it's going to tell you the dials that you need to tweak in your career to get where you wanna go. And if you don't know what those dials are, you're, how are you ever going to fix what you need to fix to get where you want to go? So the more data that we, well, the more willing to fail we are, the more willing we are to take inspired action and be willing to put ourselves out there, the more data that we get about what we need to optimize so that the next time we do these things, we're going to get a better result. But if fear of failure is keeping you from doing these things and you will never get that data. You will never know what to optimize and you will never get where you want to go. And so it is true in the technique and it is true in the opportunities that you are taking or not taking or creating or not creating for your singing career. If you are not willing to make a bad sound and fail, then how are you ever going to get the data on what that could possibly feel like? so that you can trust that you can do that and be successful. If you are not willing to, to do the hard things and make those investments in whatever it is, a training program or, or in a record or, you know, going to a lot of auditions, you, you know, it's like, then how, how are you going to know what you need to tweak so that the next record is a lot more successful? But with that fear of failure, so if the first one doesn't go the right way, because you don't have that mindset of, I'm just failing forward. I'm learning, I'm failing and I'm learning and I'm iterating so that the next shot that I take has a much better chance of being successful. If you don't have that mindset, then you will take one shot and if it doesn't come out the way you want, you will crawl back into the hole and you will not do it again. That's how this goes. And then you risk being in that place where it's now five years later, 10 years later, and you're watching other people living your dream while you're settling for plan B in your life because you didn't know how to fail forward. 
We didn't know that that was part of the game. And so the more willing you are to fail in your technique, in your performances, in how you're putting yourself out there, the faster you will go towards creating that elite singing career that you want. Now, it's all very well for me to say, go, do things, be willing to fail. That's really hard. If you do not have a structured mindset and a structured skill set backing you up. I it took me years and I still have to work on this in my own in my own life in my own creation process in my own career. It can take years to condition your mindset to be willing to fail and to just look at the data and not the drama without feeling less than. And it is the conditioning of that mindset that also optimizes and maximizes your skill set, meaning your technique. Because being able to tap to, well, being able to let go of the old habits and, and blocks and patterns that were showing up in your technique that you've probably been using and engaging with for years, if not decades, being willing to jump off that cliff and trust something new and employ something new. That, that takes faith, that takes being willing to fail. But that is a conditioned, that is a conditioned skill to be able to iterate in your mindset like that. But having that allows you to actually maximize your technique much more quickly. Because every time you do it, if you're willing to make a bad sound, then you get data on what you need to do for the next time. So you guys, it's just like, it's, all just looking at data and being willing to fail, being willing to see what needs to get optimized. And that is how you move quickly. That is how you will move the most quickly into the sound and the career that you want that lives at an elite level. And so it's not easy to do that on your own. It's not easy to build that that muscle of being willing to fail and not be scared and and not feel less than when you're doing that. And so that is one of the things that we work our singers hardcore when we're getting them from the point that they are now to that successful elite career. And so if you would like our help to do that, if you recognize yourself in everything that I'm saying, and you are the kind of singer who has a lot of training and you are serious about putting yourself out there for opportunities, for the things that are gonna bring you impact and income, but you're not succeeding the way that you want, I guarantee you that you have not been willing to fail. And how that shows up in your technique and how that shows up in your ability to make an impact and land gigs and take the things, the steps that you need to take on the road to your career and creating this very powerfully. And so if you recognize yourself in that, I wanna invite you to book a call with us. And on this call, we're gonna get on the phone for like 45 minutes, maybe an hour, and we're gonna talk about where you are. We're gonna talk about the gap between where you are and where you want to go. We're gonna talk about the things that have been sabotaging you, the fears you have, how hard it is you know, to be willing to fail and how that's been holding you back and a lot of other things that might be holding you back that we're gonna get clarity on. And then I'm gonna share with you, if I think it's a fit, then I will share with you the steps and the exact strategy that we take with our singers to be able to annihilate these things so that, that you can move powerfully and quickly into this elite singing career. And if it's not a fit, that's okay too. The call is free, but it is not for everyone. This call is for serious, real singers who are out there taking, taking actions, making records, going to auditions, performing, gigging, hustling for this career. This is not for you if you're more of a recreational singer and you just want to learn how to sing better at, you know, karaoke or, or your cousin's wedding or something. Okay. Um, but if you are a real serious singer who is serious about having an elite career and bridging that gap to get there, then this is for you. This is also not for you if 
you are unwilling to invest time, money, and energy into having the elite career that you want. So having an elite singing career, being successful, making an impact, and getting paid at a really high level requires investment, an investment of time, an investment of money, an investment of energy. And if you are not willing to make that investment to have that elite career, then I definitely cannot help you. So if you are willing to make that investment in yourself to have the career that you want, and you are a serious singer, then book a call with us so that I can share with you the exact strategy that we would use to be able to take you from here to there, being able to get past these things in your mindset and your skill set that have been holding you back. And if it's a fit for us to work together, awesome. If it's not, that's okay too. But I want you to know that there is a way to optimize and optimize quickly when we can get skill set and mindset on the same page. And we're not being waylaid by fears of failure, fear of judgment, not fear of not getting it right. All these things that keep you guys on the bench, feeling less than, and being really jealous as you watch other people get to live their dreams, but not you. So I invite you to book a call. If you're watching on YouTube, it's gonna be on the end screen that you can just click after this. If you're watching on Facebook, the link to book a call will be in the chat. So I hope you guys have an amazing day. Thank you for tuning in to Pro Singer Success Collective. I look forward to talking with you if you book a call and I will see you next time. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for tuning into today's episode. If you wanna subscribe, click the link right over there that says subscribe. And if you wanna book a breakthrough session with me, which you absolutely should do, then click the link right over here that says book a call to schedule an appointment to speak with us. I'll see you on the next episode.